Hello everyone, it's Jacqueline April. I am doing a new Trials playlist today. And the reason that I really feel strongly about doing these is because we are in a very hard time in history in the world right now. And people are going through a lot of trials. Um, and I'm talking about in every area of our lives, people are going through so many harsh things right now. So, and my goal with these videos is to bring you hope. So what I, what I do as a chaplain, the main thing that um, I am trying to do is bring people hope. So when, when someone is sick, when someone is um, you know, down and out. I hear a lot of different stories, just, just things happening in people's lives. We're talking, you know, any, any, any number of things, emotional, financial, you know, spiritual, any kind of trial that people are in. And my reason for doing what I do is to bring hope. And it's not my hope. It's the hope of the father. And um, so I believe in that hope so strongly and I believe it for myself. So I want to put that out there for others. So when someone is sick and dying, um, I mean, I'm, call I'm called to comfort care cases all the time. And what that means is that someone is, um, has gone through every test, every treatment that um, they can possibly think of for this person and they are going to just let them die peacefully um, and without pain. So they may have to extubate them, you know, whatever they have to do, turn everything off. And these are these are really harsh realizations and you know it's it's a hard place for people to get to. But that's when they, they call on us to go. Um, we work really closely with the palliative care staff at the hospital. So when I'm in rounds sometimes, and the doctor's rounds, we, we're supposed to go to those. Sometimes in there, the palliative care nurse will, will pull me aside or even the doctor, um, sometimes any of the staff can pull me aside. Um, I don't know all of them yet. I'm very, very focused on the patients and I need to be better with staff, but a lot of them do know me or I know their names and they will stop me and say, hey, April, can you, you know, go check on this person? Um, or, and the palliative care you know, staff will say, um, we're doing comfort care at two o'clock or whatever with this patient, so we need you to be there. Sometimes they don't call us. A lot of times, um, a lot of times the families um, request it a lot of times they don't I mean it just depends but but when they request it whether sometimes it's just the nurse that thinks they need us you know whatever we just go check it out so and in 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 those cases people are very somber it's like okay we are we are out of options and we have to let our loved one go for whatever reason. Now, sometimes um, there are things that can be done. Um, and, and so ethics comes in a lot because um, some of these things are not ethically worth doing. You know, like um, you could do a surgery on someone that is on a vent or dying that they know they could do the surgery, but the surgery isn't really going to give them a quality of life. So they could even do the surgery and be successful, but they're not going to have a quality of life. So that's when they, they bring in the ethics committee. Um, I was asked to be on ethics by the ICU, um, <laughs> the lead ICU person. Uh, what is her name? ICU director or whatever. Um, she asked me if I wanted to be on ethics committee and I said I would. Um, I was on ethics committee at St. Mary's when I was there. Didn't really do a whole lot. I mean, there's a lot of people on that committee there, so they didn't really call on me a whole lot. And the other, the lead chaplain was kind of the one that, that did it. But here, I think they only have one chaplain on ethics committee here. So I deferred to Chaplain Kevin because he had been here nine years and he wanted to be on it. So I said, let him do it. <laughs> you know, I've got all of this, um, schooling and everything that I'm dealing with and so I'm, I know that you know it'll come along later whenever I'm you know have more time and stuff um, so our 
boss, our supervisor, well, Kevin is, so after that, let me get my story straight here. After that, Kevin became our director. So I don't know what happened with the ethics thing after that, but our other boss who is missions integration, anyway, he's on ethics. So I don't think they really need anyone right now, but the reason I brought that up, I don't even know, is because ethics comes into play a lot. But anyway, when you're with the comfort care, the, the thing is, it's like, okay, maybe there's no hope left on the earth. Maybe medicine has done everything they can do. When you believe in Christ and you know that there is hope in the afterlife, you know that there is joy and you can be with your savior when, when your life here is over, then there may not be hope on the earth, but there is hope with the Lord. So that's what I'm trying to say. So, um, so my goal is to bring hope. So if someone it doesn't believe, they've left their beliefs. I mean, I hear all the time, and I don't know why people feel like they need to tell me this. I guess because I'm a chaplain, but like, oh, I don't go to church anymore, or you know, I used to believe, you know, or da da da, or I don't go to church, and it's like that going to church isn't the main thing. I mean, you could have someone that goes to church that's gone to church for 40 years and they're still, you know, not where they need to be spiritually. So that's not really the litmus test is what I would say. The litmus test is what is in your heart. What do you believe in your heart? There could be many reasons why people can't go to church. They're elderly. They can't get there. They can't walk. Like my brother right now who's living with me, he can't really walk. Um, he is using a walker right now um, because his left leg is, it's, I don't want to say it's paralyzed, but something is wrong with it. It's not functioning. So he's dragging it. He kind of drags it when he walks. So it could take him 10 minutes to get from the front door to the car. And he's just not going to be able to go, you know, to a whole lot of places. It's just too hard. So, um, so now I'm, I don't know how I segued to that, but um, we have gotten him um, on, um, on insurance. So now he can get all the testing that he needs and um, he's going to have an MRI, um, I think next week. I think it is next week. So I'm, I'm taking him to all of these appointments and things and hopefully we can find, you know, what's wrong with his leg and everything. Why did I bring that up? I don't know. I'm all over the place this morning, but <laughs> back to the trials playlist. Oh, I was trying to give you a little bit of an update. So right now I am working on trying to get prepared for classes in less than a month now or right at a month now. I am very behind. Uh, right now I am trying to help my youngest son um, finish up his schooling because he's supposed to be done by the end of May with 10th grade and he um, has struggled ever since he went on to online schooling. <clears throat> he struggled with being motivated and all of this stuff. But right now we have him, we have him way further ahead than he was last, the end of last semester. Um, he is, <clears throat> he's almost there, but I, at night when I come home from work, I try to work with him on that. Um, try to see where my brother's at, what's going on with that. And then I have other things that I'm working on in my life. So, um, the fact that I'm trying to give hope to others, um, it's something that I really hang on to for myself. So I'm not trying to give you something that I didn't think worked for me. I had to stop and take a drink. Um, so I've got my little notes for my first paper. Um, I was talking to all of our classmates uh, in our little messenger chat and only four of us were enrolled. And I'm like, are the rest of us gonna enroll? So there's only six of us left in our cohort. And the other two said, yes, we're going to enroll. So there's, there's, thank God we haven't lost any more, but everyone is saying that they're behind and I feel very behind too. I, I tried to work on my paper this weekend. I, I did a lot on Saturday. I didn't really do a whole lot on Sunday because I have other things. I have other duties. You know, I have household duties and, you know, all, a lot of things that I'm responsible for. 
So it's hard to find the time and then also rest because I do believe a lot in resting. I, ha I have to pace myself. I pace myself at work, I pace myself at home. Um, if I don't, then I will burn out. And so I have to rest, I have to unplug, you know. But so I do have my, my outline for my paper, but then when I was reading, um, so it says one thing in the syllabus, but then when you go into the Canvas, the actual course, um, the professor's telling us actually exactly what he wants us to, what, what he wants us to touch on in the papers. So I stopped after I read that. I thought, oh gosh, I don't know if my, what I have stuck in my throat right now. I don't know if my um, thesis statement and my outline is touching on all of those points that the professor actually wants. I mean, he put a rubric in there and it was like five points for this. You need to touch on this. You need to do 10 points for that. And I was just like, oh my God, this is really, I have to really. So the first two papers that we're writing for this professor are four to six page papers that we have that are due the first day of class. So those two are gonna be very specific. I have to give the professor exactly what he's looking for. So I have to work on that. And then the other five papers are two page papers, one on each of the books, that's for the second class. But the first class, he also has several presentations and I'm like, is this the class of presentations? Cause there's like a presentation day one, there's another presentation, there's this. There's a group project, which is a, another presentation. Like the whole class is like papers and presentations. And I'm like, Lord, help me get through this because I am very weary <laughs> right now. Um, just have had a lot going on, a lot of things that I have to deal with. And um, and and here's, here's how weary I am. Here's how weary I really am. Um, Priscilla Shirer, who I put on, on one of my other videos, I, I posted her sermon. She actually came to Life Church, and I'm on this email that you can be invited to the private taping event. But you can go, they'll, they'll let you know when the, when the taping is, when she was going to tape some, I guess, some sermons for Life Church. And it was 20 minutes from my house. It was on a Monday night. I think it was 6.30 to 8.30. And then by the time I got home and settled and everything, I was just like, I'm just too tired to go. And she's like my favorite. So for me not to go to that private taping, I, I could have vlogged it. I'm kind of kicking myself now because I could have vlogged that for my, um, for my channel. Um, <clears throat> go to the live sermon taping of Priscilla Shirer. That would have been amazing but that's how weary I am right now and I have you know the classes that I'm taking I have to put a lot of my energy into that because that's very important to me and so anyway um, that's the update that I have uh, for you let's go into the the playlist uh, okay so the first one <clears throat> I'm going to post Come Jesus Come by C.C. Winans. And I think this is a very important um, song right now because when I talk to other believers and Christians, you know, around, everyone is like so stressed out. There's so much going on in the world in their personal lives. And people are just like, can Jesus come now, like today? You know, personally, I wish he had came yesterday. Like, I'm done. You know, I don't. I don't want to deal with any of this anymore. And that's what this song is saying. It's like, Jesus come. Like we are, we are ready. We are, we are done. We, and, and, and I don't say that because I don't want someone to lambast me with, oh, she's escapist theology. She just wants to escape this world because that's not true. I am doing everything I can while I'm here. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm working as a chaplain, I'm going to school, I'm taking care of my family, I'm doing all those things. But would I like to be released from all of it and have Jesus come and just, you know, be done? Uh, heck yes, I would. You know, and I'm not gonna apologize for saying that. And I think a lot of people are there. And it's because, and one thing I was going to say about this is that what the prophets are saying right now is that we are in the days of Noah. So uh, there's something that says 
um, there's some verse that says we are that when Jesus returns we it's going to be like the days of Noah and the days of Noah God you know flooded the earth and you know his wrath came and those people were gone those people that rejected God so we are there now so God is not going to flood the earth again because he gave us the rainbow to promise us that he would not do that but he is going to return and take his people home because um, of the wrath that is coming. So, uh, and I think C.C. Winans, Winans is one of the most precious, you know, um, Christian singers that we have right now in our time. Um, love her, of course. Then I'm going to post um, Unraveling by Corey Asbury. And in the video, um, there's a lady, um, a ballerina uh, dancing through the video so she does this choreography that kind of like shows how you know she's stressed and, and and she's unraveling and so the song is about how we can be unraveling but God is going to carry us through even though we feel like we're unraveling we feel like um, our lives might be over or we can't get through one more thing you know we can't get through one more trial but God, we can't, it's true, we can't, but God can do it through us. So Unraveling by Corey Asbury, then I'm gonna, uh, let's see, we're gonna do You Cannot Be Stopped, Jesus Culture. Oh, I was gonna read the lyrics of that. I have to pull that up here real quick. God cannot be stopped. So God is in control. He's in control of the universe, of the world, of your town, your state, you know, your circumstance. He's in control of everything. And um, it's just a really beautiful song. And it's the acoustic version. So it's just real calm and, you know, really neat song to hear. Then we are going to do um, Natalie Grant, I Praise You in the Storm. So one of my personal testimonies would be um, like what that song means is that even though you're in a storm, you can still praise God through it because, and that actually helps bring him closer to you so that he can help you even more. So when I got divorced of my first husband, um, you know, it was devastating because I knew that personal testimony when I first got divorced, I was devastated because I knew that um, that was the father of my children and that my children would never have that. We would never have our little nuclear family again. That's mostly what devastated me. Um, but I determined to go ahead and praise God in the middle of it, even though as devastated as I was and as hurt as I was, I mean, I was really hurting. Um, you know, everything in my life changed. I can go into all of that in another day, but it was pain. It was painful. It was extremely painful. And I still, I just decided I'm just, I'm not going to stop worshiping God. I'm not going to stop thanking God for the future and for whatever he has for me, even though I can't see it right now. So that's what Natalie Grant is, um, <clears throat> saying here. She's not saying I'm praising you for the storm. Okay, and I do know people, I do know people that are kind of spiritual giants that would say that. I praise him for the storm because I know that I'm going to be stronger after the storm. But we're not there yet, right? We're going to praise him at least in the storm because we know that the storm will end. Whatever trial you're in will end. And there is, uh, you know, this saying, this too shall pass. And it will. And even though when you're when you're in it, it looks like it's not going to pass, but it it does. It could take a little bit longer, but even it will pass. And then you'll look back and think, oh my gosh, I almost gave up because I was in that storm. And Natalie Grant is a very famous um, Christian singer. Um, one of my favorite songs she does is called King of the World. Maybe I'll post that another day. But I thought this one was was apropos, you know, for this trials playlist. Um, the next one is Good Plans, and that's based on Psalm 23. I can't remember. Who is that? Is that Eve Elevation? I forgot to pull that one up. I'm, I'm lagging behind here, guys. Oh, it's Red Rocks Worship. Um, good, good Plans um, video, and this song is fire. Here's one you can put on repeat, right? God has good plans for you. That's Jeremiah 29, 11, right? Um, that God has 
good plans for you and for a hope and a future. So read that first. But um, that's what I'm trying to do with this playlist is instill hope in, in people that are hurting. Um, and so that's a good song. Um, just, you know, listen to that one. Um, and I think that's it. So that's one, two, three, four, that's five songs for the playlist and I'm going to give you two bonus songs this time okay <laughs> and yet these are all songs that I love that I play I have on repeat I sing them um, in my car on my way to and from work what am I doing I'm usually singing along to some song something like this um, so I might have um, you know, abandoned on repeat for a while. I might have Spirit Lead Me, then I'll do Crowns Down, then I have Good Plans, then I have, you know, whatever it is that's touching me right then at the time. Like this morning, I did listen to C.C. Winans, G Come Jesus Come. Um, so, so s different songs on different days. Like today, I feel like listening to this, but it's usually, I'm always worshiping, usually in the car. Um, that's just what I feel in my spirit to do um so bonus are not necessarily christian songs but they're they're still good and ones that that are touching right so i'm going to post um andrea bocelli who is a opera uh, opera style not opera but um i don't know the term but he's a famous singer um from italy and this is him and his son, Matteo Bocelli, singing Time to Say Goodbye, which I think is Hans Zimmerman. So it's a little bit in English, mostly in Italian, but it's just beautiful. Any of Andrea Bocelli's stuff is beautiful, right? Um, there's one that he sings with Ed Sheeran that's like to die for. <laughs> I'll post that another day. And then this is, I think this is basically my favorite song. Um, other than a Christian song because my favorite song is Be Thou My Vision. I'll post that another time. But this one is from Phantom of the Opera, All I Ask of You. And this is the version from um, Josh Groban, who is an amazing singer also. Josh Groban and Kelly Clarkson. So that's a very touching song. All I ask of you is to love me, right? And it reminds me of that famous scene in, um, what's that Julia Roberts movie? It's one of my favorites, um, Notting Hill, where she says, I'm standing here, I'm just a girl standing here asking in front of a boy, asking him to love her. So that's what it reminds me of with that song. All I ask of you is beautiful. So, um, okay, I wanted to read a few extra things I was going to say here because I have to get off, I have to be on a huddle call in less than seven minutes. So, okay, so lyrics, it's a huddle with all the chaplains. Um, we have um, all the chaplains here, which are five of us. Let's see, is that including our director? I got Kevin, Jason. There's six of us here, and then the other two hospitals. So, so we all do a video call to kind of, you know, get the pulse of the hospitals and what's going on, all that kind of stuff. So the lyrics to um, You Cannot Be Stopped, and it's Jesus Culture featuring Chris Kalala. Um, the dark tried to hide you and steal you away. Death tried to keep you inside of the grave. The enemy fought you. He tried, but he lost. You cannot be stopped. So this is talking about how when Jesus died and he went to hell to, to, to steal the keys of death, hell, and the grave, okay? So the enemy thought that he won because he did, Jesus was crucified and died. So the enemy thought he won, but he didn't win because Jesus resurrected and now he cannot be stopped. And that's what this song is saying. So then it goes on and it says, when we cried for freedom, you tore down the walls. The weight of our burdens, you carried it all. Our fears and our failures hang dead on the cross. You cannot be stopped. So he not only did that for himself, he did that for you and I. He's a mover of mountains, breaker of chains. Jesus has triumphed over the grave. Sing hallelujah, the battle is won. Nothing can stand against our God. 
We stand on your victory. We shout out your praise. Miracle maker, you're mighty to save. You're awesome in power, relentless in love. You cannot be stopped. There's nothing that can stop our God. And that, that repeats. There's nothing that can stop our God. And so whenever you're in a trial, whenever you're in a horrible battle, spiritual battle, um, the enemy might think he won or he might act like he won or he might tell you he won. But God wins in the end. You read the end of the Bible, God wins. The enemy does not win. He may win some battles. He won some battles in my life recently, but he's not going to win the war. And so you stand on Jesus's victory and the victory of the cross, right? And then um, with Natalie Grant, I was going to read um, in her song, um, Praise You in the Storm, one of the, when she says, I lift my my eyes up to the hills. That is a psalm. It's Psalm 121. So one of the best things you can do is read the psalms, especially when you're down. So this is a beautiful psalm. It says, um, the Lord, the keeper of Israel, I will raise my eyes to the mountains from where will my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not allow your foot to slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Behold, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your protector. The Lord is your shade on your right hand. The sun will not beat down on you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will protect you from all evil. The Lord will guard your going out and your coming in from this time and forever. So, so she's saying a different version of that in the song. I don't know if, she, if that's the NIV or some other version, but it's Psalm 121. I will raise my eyes to the mountains. From where will, where will my help come? My eyes to the mountains. From where will my help come? And so I want to encourage you today and let you know that there is hope. There is always hope. Okay, so for sermon, I'm going to post Jensen Franklin, since I talked about him last time. Um, I picked, I'm trying to pick ones that are going to help you through trials, obviously, or hard times. So I picked um, whose, whose report will you believe? Jensen Franklin, speaking at his church. And then I'm going to post... Um, God knows where you are. That's Joyce Meyer. Joyce Meyer is a legend. Don't come to me about women preachers, <laughs> women speakers, uh, women pastors. Um, that's what I'm doing my dissertation on. And I fully believe that it is um, a godly thing that you, that women can do this. And so, um, all the naysayers out there, sorry, but you're very wrong, and I'm posting this um, for encouragement um, for anyone who needs it. I want to let you know that there is hope today, and with God, there is always hope. Take care, and I'll see you in the next video.